bold statement. I think the Nissan Kicks e-Power is the most significant vehicle launched in the Philippines this year. That said, is the VL version the one I would pick? Let's find out. This is the Nissan Kicks e-Power VL. It is the top of the line model of the entire Kicks range. Uh, and it's the one that's priced at around one, uh, 1.509 million. Now, in terms of where this sits in the Nissan model range, it's kind of the successor to the Juke, but not really directly. Because Nissan actually has both of those models in international markets. But instead of offering the second generation Juke, here in the Philippines, they decided to go with the Kicks instead, and all of them have e-power. More on the e-power system later. But looking at the vehicle, it does really look nice with these headlights, that grille, the two-tone look. It's actually not very different from the VE that I drove because a lot of the details of the vehicle, the wheels, the bumper, uh, it's really just the color, the roof, the way it all pops out. But one difference here is that if you look on the side mirrors, the rear end, of course, down here, you will see cameras. This one comes with a round view monitor. The one I drove before did not. You know, the color of the vehicle really does make a big difference in how it looks. Because the one before with the dark blue and then the black, it kind of all just blended together. In this one, the contrast is really fantastic. You can see the line we were pointing out before with the glass here, which looks really neat. The LED, the LED lights here with the connecting bar there. The lower bumper, which actually looks nice and sporty. But yeah, it looks really neat from here. Now, when you pop open the tailgate, I've shown you all this before, but it's a nice and spacious tailgate. It does not come with a spare though under here because it comes with a tire repair kit. And by the way, it's also a Continental tire repair set because Continental owns Dunlop as I learned with the last video. But the heart of the Kicks e-Power is really right here, the powertrain. Now, how can you tell a vehicle is not really internal combustion or full internal combustion is when you look at the piping or the hoses. In this case, there's an orange one, which is not a hose, it's a conduit. That's really the sign that you would know that it's primarily EV or even a hybrid vehicle. Now, Nissan likes to call their version as e-power only. They don't like to use the word hybrid, but in reality, in terms of engineering, it is a hybrid. It's a series hybrid. So what that means is you have both a gasoline engine and an electric drive system. Uh, the gas engine itself is a 1.2 liter three-cylinder non-turbo engine, but it's not behaving like a gas engine in your regular vehicle because the engine itself is not hooked up to a transmission that can drive the front wheels. That is actually what is happening with the e-Power series hybrid system because only the electric motor can actually drive the front wheels. So why it's called series is because you have engine and then you have uh, the battery electrical system and then you have the electric drive, the electric motors. It's a series. It's very different from the series parallel system that you have in, let's say, the Toyota uh, hybrid drive system, because in that scenario, both the engine and the electric motor can drive the vehicle. In this one, only the electric motor can drive the front wheels. Woo, that's a mouthful. That may all sound like a lot, but the result really is a vehicle that feels like an EV to drive and the engine kicks in to charge the batteries as needed. What does that feel like? Well, I'll show you, but first, let's check out the interior. Compared to the VE that I drove before, the main difference really here is the leather with the black, uh, sorry, with the gray stitching. Now, the leather does look really nice, but considering that it comes only in black, well, it attracts all kinds of light and it gets really warm as I found out a few hours earlier. But in terms of amenities, what do you get here in the back? Two USB ports, uh, USB, yeah, the regular USB. Unfortunately, you do not get rear AC vents in the kicks, and this being the top of the line one, none of them do. But 
nonetheless the ac of this one is pretty good we'll show you later if you look down there this also still has a transmission tunnel which isn't being used for any kind of transmitting apart from the exhaust pipe that goes from the front to the back also keep in mind that there's a transmission tunnel there because well this was engineered to be a an internal combustion car from the start but if you look under the front seats you will notice a little hump uh, in the left and on the right that is for the battery underneath i mean all things considered given that it's a series hybrid nissan did a good job to make sure to tuck in the battery so it doesn't take up too much space underneath here you still get a fuel tank uh, which is why they can't really do much with the rear seat so i still think the honda's uh, the honda hrv with the ult system is the class of the field when it comes to versatility but these seats you can actually fold down no problem it's a 60 40 split if you also look there's no center armrest here which is kind of unfortunate but a very minor detail but one thing i appreciate thank you is that if you're the type that carries around extra shirts in your car when i hang up mine on this one it stays nice and parallel with the rear seat pretty neat compared to the ve there are only really a few big differences with the kicks e-power vl the most obvious one again the upholstery the black leather it does look very nice but again it does retain or attract quite a bit more heat the other thing is with the main screen now the screen itself looks the same but remember when i press it before there was nothing there this time when you press the camera button you get the 360 camera system that we all really like it has the guidelines if you're you know moving forward or backing up and it has mod which is moving object detection meaning if someone's walking around the vehicle or like a, if you're backing out of a parking slot and then there's a pedestrian coming across you it will warn you so that's actually a good thing but personally i've kind of learned to live without it because when i was driving the kicks e-power ve that one did not have did not have it and kind of got used to it but now this one does have the android auto and the apple carplay you can hook up via the usb port down there or the usb c port like i am right now so their their system is actually really good it's actually quite fast which i really do like uh, that's something we really look forward to and one thing i did notice when i was taking uh, when i was on a road trip is that the audio quality of the ve was really good this one is even better now around the vehicle what else do we see well you've got the climate control down here which is normal single zone and it's pretty cold as you would expect from a nissan but down here you get your parking brake with the auto brake hold personally i don't use the auto brake hold that much but it's nice that it's there if i ever have to now down here when being blocked by my usb cable usb c cable are the drive mode buttons and the shifter now i've mentioned the shifter before not a big fan of this it looks like a whiteboard eraser or one of those old mouse mice to me so but uh, you have your p and then you have sorry you have your drive you have your engine braking mode which will show up actually right over there on the screen right right there it'll show up there on the screen and then you can go to reverse also shows up on the screen right and then of course your neutral oh i'll drive let's put it there for now now um there are multiple drive modes just like in the ve you press this button and then it changes up here to sport as you can see uh and then also eco mode so you have three primary drive modes you have uh normal eco and sport but if you're if you've activated eco and sport uh you've got two more sub modes that actually that are actually useful the first one is the ev mode uh, which means it prioritizes uh, the ev driving characteristics of the vehicle and tries to keep the engine off for as long as possible so long as you have a full charge but if you want to charge the vehicle charge it up on your drive you can do that by putting it into the charge mode by holding down the ev button so overall that's pretty much the interior of the nissan kicks e-power vl i kind of wish they put more into it uh, by by putting like say a sunroof for example or a sunglass holder because it is quite a, a quite a big jump from the ve to this one but one thing i really want to change uh, with a lot of nissans is this when you open the door and you press the off it sounds like an old 90s alarm clock that i used to grow up to weird
overall, my time with the Kix E Power has been really enjoyable. I mean, I spent a considerable amount of time with the VE variant and just a few more days with this one. And both vehicles, really nice. I mean, if you're driving it around the city, the ride, as you can see now, I'm going over potholes intentionally. It's actually managing it well. Here, another one. Yeah. Now, if you notice, I do go over potholes intentionally. Not the super big ones I might destroy the tires, but it's something I do because I like to go over these things to show what the vehicle, how it handles uh, all these imperfections. You know, the, the rougher the road, the better. Except for off-road. I mean, I won't take the Kix E-Power off-road because it's not meant for that. It's a front-wheel drive vehicle. It's not all-wheel drive. But the ride on EDSA, the bad parts of EDSA, it's actually quite all right for something this small because normally small vehicles, they're not made for comfort. The short wheelbase means they pitch quite a bit, especially on roads like these. But in this one, they manage it really well. And of course, you have the silence of the electric uh, drive system. And when the engine kicks in, it's actually maintaining a nice steady hum. Like right now, I can activate charge mode. There. Can you hear the difference? There is a little bit of a hum, but it's, it's minute. It, the hum of the engine or the RPM of the engine does not actually, uh, is not directly related, is that the right term? directly related to the throttle pressure that you may have on the accelerator pedal. And that's because the engine, again, acting only as a generator. So when you have a gen set at home, for example, when you turn that on, you notice it's always on a steady, very loud sound of the generator. In this one, it's kind of the same, but much quieter. And it's generating more voltage for the system to charge up the battery. So right now, my battery is about 75%. It's still humming along. Now the now I can turn on EV mode, cut the engine out completely, and cruise quietly. Well, manage traffic quietly. There is something I want to update with my review of the kicks from before, and that's with actually the mileage, the, the extra mileage I put on that one. Because when I filmed the review of that one, uh, I had done maybe about 200 or 300 kilometers, mostly in the city and just on the expressway. But after filming the video, I took it up to La Union and to Baguio. And I got to really experience it on the expressway. It's really smooth. Uh, even on the provincial highways, it's actually very easy to overtake with the Kix E power. Uh, because you think that a vehicle like this is kind of down on power, but like, it's really not. It's got torque when you need it right away because Again, electric motors, maximum torque at zero RPM. So the torque of this one, I think, is around 240, which is actually pretty good for a vehicle of this size. But what I was really enjoying was the overtaking on the provincial roads because, again, it's kind of a point and squirt deal. It's not super powerful. For that one, I would really go to something like a Geely Cool Ray if I want really sporty driving. That one would be more enjoyable. But considering that this is a hybrid, I actually really like it. When I went up to Baguio, I took Nagelian Road and, it was, and the Kixi Power was really, really nice. Uh, but it was on the downhill that kind of surprised me. Because mo for most of the downhill route along Marcos Highway a couple days later, the e-power system, the engine, kind of stayed on for most of the way. And I actually had to clarify why with uh, the Nissan staff. And I, they're saying it's more like a standby mode for when you need it. As to why, I'm actually not quite sure. Maybe we'll have an answer for you in the Supers. I'll put it down there once we get an answer from them. But it's a really enjoyable vehicle if you're taking it out of town, which is what something like this is meant for. You're not going to be constrained by infrastructure like you would be in an EV. You can just fuel up and go. And that's going to be the key for a vehicle like this. It's for young people who want to go out. I mean, I'm not young anymore, but I still go out. But hey, I can still enjoy a vehicle like this. question that really remains is whether I would pick the VL over the VE or even the EL. 
And the answer there is no. This one is priced at 1.509 million. But the VE I drove, that was 1309. That's a 200,000 peso difference in terms of the price of the two. And really the only meaningful changes, the leather interior and the around view monitor. Things that, well, personally, I can actually live without and be perfectly happy. So if you're in the market for either a VL, which by the way, I still do like, the VE, which is actually my pick out of all of them, or the EL, well, I suggest you actually go out and buy it now if you can get a unit, because who knows, in a few months time, it might cost much more. This is Vince of AutoIndusia.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found our videos useful. And follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and everything else in between. Thanks.